In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. I welcome you this morning to the house of our God. Today, being the 14th Sunday, in ordinary time of the year, according to the church's calendar, as we have gathered to give God on our Lord's worship, we pray that our worship will find acceptance in his sight. In this Mass, in a very special way, I give thanks to God for the gift of my priesthood as I celebrate my anniversary today here at St. John's the Evangelist Parish, praying for God's blessings upon my life, upon the life of my family members, and those who have assisted me to answer God's call, that good Lord will bless them. I also pray for the peaceful repose of the soul of my dad, Felix Onyekwere, mighty Ugwa. Also, the family of Mama Joan Odawe and the family of Anne Kaburu, they are thanking God for their families, asking for preservation and protection of the members of their families. I also remember you in a very special way in this Mass, that the good Lord will meet you at your point of need. May I now invite you to add your own private petitions. My brothers and sisters, knowing full well that we are sinners in need of God's mercy, let us now call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and for mercy. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners. Christ eleison. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting.
us pray. O God, who in the basement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. From those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, the response, I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. I will bless your name forever. My King and my God, I will bless your name forever, my King, my God. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever. Thank you, O Lord, and all your faithful ones bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your mighty deeds. I will bless your name. The 
Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his deeds. The Lord supports all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit, if the spirit of God really dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brethren, we are debaters, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, a disaster cloud. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. 
the gospel of the Lord. God is good, and all the time, Zachariah chapter 9, verse 9, which is our first reading today, says, Thus says the Lord, rejoice greatly, O daughter, and I add, O son of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter, O son of Jerusalem. Behold, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he. My dear brothers and sisters, our king is here with us. Psalm 24 verse 8 asks, Who is the king of glory? And I ask you, who is the king of glory for you? I need an answer. Who is the king of glory for you? Are you afraid of saying it? Who is the king of glory for you? Jesus Christ is the king of glory. For he is the Lord, strong and mighty. And so, Jesus is now missed, my dear people of God. And there is an invitation for us to be happy, to be joyful, because Jesus is now missed. Isaiah recognized this in Isaiah chapter 12, verse 6. And Isaiah tells us, Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. When you understand this, my dear people of God, you have no reason for not being happy, for not being grateful to God, for being in his house this morning to worship him. The understanding of this made Dom Meon to sing this song. When I come into your presence, I'm so happy. When I come into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there is anointing. Your spirit moves around us. In your presence, anointing breaks the yoke. Jesus, we are here. Father, we are here. Holy Ghost, we are here. We are here for you. When you come to the presence of God, there is gladness and joy because the Spirit of God moves around us. And that was why John chapter 4, verse 24 said that God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and the truth. In like manner, my brothers and sisters, our today's second reading tells us that we are not in the flesh, we are in the spirit because the Spirit of God dwells in us. 
And how can we live in spirit, my dear people of God? To live in spirit means to walk according to the first step of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why today's gospel, Jesus is giving us this invitation. Come to me. Jesus is saying to you, come to me. He's saying to me, come to me. And so for you to understand, this, to walk in the spirit, it means to begin to ask yourself, how can I walk in the full step of Jesus? I'd like you to turn to your friend sitting by your side and ask the person, come to Jesus. Say it aloud. What are you coming to Jesus to do? From today's gospel reading. What are you coming to Jesus to do? When you ask your friend to come to Jesus, then tell the friend what he's coming to Jesus to do based on today's gospel reading. I may call someone to come and tell us. We have Mike here, who is bold enough to answer. That is no. I want somebody else. From today's gospel reading, there is invitation from our Lord Jesus Christ. Say, come to me and do what? To learn what from him? Learn from Jesus how to be gentle and lowly in heart. And that is going to be the springboard of our today's homily. Three things we are called to learn from Jesus. The gospel reading began with Jesus saying, I thank you, Lord of heaven and earth. And that means the first thing we have to learn from Jesus is the attitude to gratitude. Attitude to gratitude. The second is to learn how to be gentle like Jesus. And the third is to learn how to be lowly like Jesus. Jesus is giving this invitation to all of us because we are heavenly laden. There is no person here in as much that you are a human being that does not have a one challenge or the other in life. But as we learn from Jesus, our life could be compared with this glass of water. When you look at this glass of water, you can see two things in your own description. You can say that this glass of water is half empty. You can as well say that the same glass of water is half filled. That is the nature of our life. In every human being, there is these blessings that God has given to us. And there is this challenge in life that we also face in the midst of these blessings. Which one do you see more? Do you look at the challenges of life more than the blessing that God has given to you? 
We are called today to learn from Jesus how to be grateful in life. One of the simplest words, so powerful, but we overlook them or neglect them, is the word of appreciation. There was this one of the best writers, known as Kipling. He was one of the best known authors. And then, the British journalist criticized him, referring him to be a machinery, because, according to them, he writes only for profit making. So one of the journalists on a group gathering came to him and asked him, I heard that your word, a word, just a single word from you, worth hundreds of dollars. And he went on to say, take this hundred dollars and then give me a word. And the journalist brought out a plain sheet of paper and pen and handed it over to Kipling to give him that one word that was $100. And Kipling accepted the money and then put it inside his pocket, received the pen and the book, and wrote, thank you. Thanks is a word that was hundreds of dollars. And that is what Jesus is telling us today, the heart of gratitude. How grateful are you to God for the life that he has given to you? How grateful am I to God for calling me to be a priest, which I'm celebrating today? In our families, we ask ourselves this question. How do we take my wife, for instance, as a husband, the food that she cooks, do I appreciate that effort or I take it for granted? For my husband, my husband goes out and gets something for me, do I say thank you or I will say that is his duty? Appreciation, gratitude, is one of the mothers of all virtues. When we learn how to appreciate the little things that we have, we get more. And that is why Jesus, in today's gospel reading, began to address God the Father by the words of appreciation. The second thing we need to learn from Jesus is how to be gentle. The word gentle comes from Greek words that means to be meek. And in today's world, gentleness and meekness, we see it as weakness. But from the biblical language, to be gentle or to be meek shows how one exercises his authority or power. And that we can understand from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is fully God and fully human. He has the power to do what is impossible. But he uses his authority with gentleness. When we read the Gospel of Luke, when Jesus Christ was going to Jerusalem with James and John, he wanted to pass through one of the Samaritans' villages. And the Samaritans refused them from passing through their village. James and John turned to him and said, Lord, should we call down, should we call down what? Fire from heaven to consume them. And what did Jesus do? Jesus rebuked them. Jesus has the power, has the authority to do so. But he acted with gentleness. 
Even they've understood that Jesus had the power to make impossible to become possible. In Luke chapter 4, he approached Jesus and asked him to use his power to make these stones to become bread. But Jesus replied, man do not live by bread alone. And so my brothers and sisters, St. Paul understood this in Philippians chapter 2. And he says, though Jesus was in the form of God, he did not make himself equal with God, eating to be grasped, but he emptied himself. Today, when we are giving power or authority, how do we exercise this power or authority? One man said that power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. You can know a man or you can know a woman when you give him power. Some of us are religious men and women. When you become the superior of your congregation, how do you exercise your authority? All of us, in one way or the other, we are leaders. In our family, we are leaders. In our place of work, we are leaders. Even the church we are inside, we are leaders. How are we exercising our authority? There was a story of this man who, because he has the authority at the head of the family, he took it upon himself that he can do anything he wants. He has married his wife for 10 years. Within these 10 years, they have suffered together, and they had one child. But this man was blessed with new work of promotion. In his place of work, he finds another woman because he fails to appreciate the beauty of the wife. He lost that sense of beauty of the wife and began to admire another woman. This made this man not to be coming home the usual time that he used to come home. And because that they used to eat together as husband and wife, his wife will always go to bed, empty stomach, without eating. And this man never bothered of eating the woman's food again. The wife has called him to ask, what is the problem? He doesn't want to open up. Not knowing that because of this woman that he has met at the office, and then, he has promised the woman that he's going to marry her, abandoning the wife. So the wife was dying because of the love that the husband has lost in him, in her. And then, eventually, this man summoned courage and wrote a letter of divorce to the wife. When the wife received the letter, she cried and then told the man, for the sake of our son, Junior, because our son, Junior, is in his final exam, can we allow this divorce to be until the child finishes the exam? And she added, please, could you also pretend, let us act like things are normal, to give the child hope so that the child can do well in his exam? And this man agreed. And then they started pretending like things are good. So one day, as the child was going to school, because when things happen in the family, children notice, but they cannot talk. 
As the child was going to school, they have agreed that they are going to accompany their child to the school. And as they were going, the man held the wife. And the son turned. I said, wow, my dad is holding my mom today. The man was struck by that statement of this young child. He kept quiet. The next day, he told the wife, let us go out. I want to take you for an outing. At this point in time, the wife had not gone out for many days, for many months. She now entered her wardrobe to look at the clothes she will use for this outing. And it was then that he don't know her that she has lost flesh because of what this man has been doing. And eventually, she saw one that she managed to wear, and she was inside the clothes. And after that, the husband hugged her. And then he saw how lean the wife has become. He was able to perceive the smell of this wife as usual. But then he said, a woman that has spent 10 years of her life with me, that I failed to recognize this. And this is what I have done to her. I will no longer divorce her. I will go back to the office and tell this woman that I have proposed to marry that never will I do that. I had decided that as, she, as he does that, he will also go to the supermarket and get beautiful flowers to give to the wife so as to apologize to the wife. He has gone to the office and then was able to summon courage to tell the woman, I'm no longer ready to marry you. Out of anger, this woman slapped him. I say, are you joking? Are you out of your mind? For the man not to change his mind, he ran out of the office and then went straight to buy a wonderful flower for the wife. He bought the flower and then moved straight to the bedroom of the wife to hand over this beautiful flower to the wife. And when he got there, the wife died. It was then he began to cry. He doesn't know what to do. And he said, now I have this flower. I'm not giving it to my wife when she is dead. But I would have done something better to give her that flower before she dies. Give your husband, give your wife her flower while she's still alive. Appreciate the little thing that you have received from each other from your congregation, from your family, be thankful. Don't allow the authority that you have, the power that you have, to corrupt you. And finally, Jesus is inviting us to be lowly. To be lowly in heart means to depend totally in God. Jesus Christ, though he is God, Hebrew tells us that he comes to God with cry, pleading unto him. 
I was answered because of his reverence to God, the Father. And so, my brothers and sisters, amidst the challenges of life, come to God. Humble yourself to come to God. That is what it means to be lowly of heart. And St. Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, when he understood this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you come to Christ in your suffering, in the challenges of life, Christ will help you to see meaning in that challenge of life. What you see to be burden, you begin to see meaning. Jesus is not promising us that there will be no tribulations, that there will be no challenges in life. Even the book of Psalms say that there are many tribulations of the righteous, but in them all, the Lord delivers them. So when you invite God in the challenging situation of your life, you begin to see a new perspective, a new dimension of that challenge. I will end by this little story of a boy who was carrying, he was five years old, and then he was carrying a baby, back in the baby. Because of the weightiness of the baby, this boy could not walk. He was sweating profusely. And the woman passing by saw the child. And she said, oh, what a burden you are carrying. And this little boy of five years turned to her and replied, I'm not carrying a burden. I'm carrying my brother. When you welcome Jesus, when you call upon Jesus and learn how to be lonely, you have a new meaning in your challenges of life. Let us now rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God.
the Father reveals the mysteries of the kingdom to little ones. Let us pray to our God who shows such love for small and simple folk. For the church, for the church in her work of charity, for the poor and the overburdened, let us pray to the Lord. For leaders who will listen to even the humblest citizens, let us pray to the Lord. For people who have shut God out of their lives, let us pray to the Lord. For the children who discover God in our community, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and bereaved members of our community, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have been called through death to eternal rest, let us pray to the Lord. All prayers and petitions into the silence of heart. Let us now raise them up to the Lord with the intercessions of our Mother Mary. As we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Lord of heaven and of earth, gathered in obedience to your son's command, your people ask you to accept their prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to be right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we are clean. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Father, we adore you. We In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Jesus, we Come, let us adore him. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Philip our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may marry to be co heirs eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and the unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble. My others are the word called Savior. To Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
God is good. Bless the man who seeks refuge in him. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. God is good, and all the time. Announcements. Today is the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year A. Today, our tithe contribution is our tithe contribution day for the month of June. Let us build the Church of Christ here on earth. We shall have adoration of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist coming Sunday, 16th July at 3.30 p.m. here at St. John. All are welcome to adore Christ together. Parents with infants for baptism, that is children who are five years and below, are encouraged to register them in the catechist's office. There will be a pre-baptism class for parents and godparents this coming Saturday, 15th July at 10 a.m. Baptism will be on 22nd July. All Missionary Youth Movement, MYM, and Youth Serving Christ, YSC, aged between 13 and 25 years, will have their mass together today at the parish main hall at 11.30 a.m. CMA, that is the Catholic Men Association, will continue with their formation classes today after the second mass. All children below 13 years will have their mass coming Sunday, 16th July, in the parish main hall at 11.30 a.m. All parents will bring children in this age bracket and are kindly requested to accompany them in that mass. The Sacred Heart of Jesus devotional group and Upendo Choir will have their meetings the coming Sunday, 16th July, after the Second Mass. St. Michael's Small Christian Community will have Mass on the coming Saturday, 15th July, at the home of Christine Nyambura, Mary Ward, at 11 a.m. All the eight parishes of the Western Deanery will have their Family Day on Saturday, 29th July, at Regina Celli, Karen Parish, at 10 a.m. The main celebrant will be His Grace, Bishop Philip Agnolo, the Archbishop of Nairobi Archdiocese. All parishioners are encouraged to attend. Tangaza University College invites all parishioners for a benefit concert to raise funds for needy students on Sunday, 16th July, starting at 3 p.m. in Tangaza Main Hall. For more information, please visit the notice board. Small Christian community meetings today are as follows. St. Dominic here at the church at 1 p.m. St. Michael here at the church at 1.30 p.m. St. Jude Tadeus at Jane Moriah's home at 3 p.m. St. Francis of Assisi at Joyce Ombori home at 3 p.m. And St. Augustine at the church at 3 p.m. We thank all those who animated Mass today. May God bless you abundantly. Mass animations next Sunday, 16th July, 2023, are as follows. 7 a.m., Community. 9 a.m., St. John Widows Association. 11.30 a.m., St. Mary. 5 p.m., Sacred Heart. Have a blessed Sunday. Please, can you come forward with them? Thank you. 
Almighty God, honor his words for you, as in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, 11, the blessings for those who pay their tithe. May your tithe be acceptable by him. May he accept it as he accepted that of the gift of Abel and that of his priest, Melchizedek. And may he reward you accordingly in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God is good. I want to use this opportunity to invite you to share in my joy. Having my anniversary here with you is something of thanksgiving to God on my own life. So I want you to join me in that thanksgiving. Usually I want to do what we used to, I used to do in my country, Nigeria. And that is to dance and come to say, God, thank you. And I invite every one of you to join me in dancing before the altar of God. Choir, please. That song that will bring down heaven, sing it for me. Amen. God bless you. I'm so grateful to God for the gift of priesthood, and that is the highest gift I have received in life, and that I will ever receive. So I'm very much appreciative to God for this gift. Usually, when I celebrate my anniversary, I used to have some days of prayer with the people of God, but this time around, because of the nature of my studies, I couldn't have it, so I asked Father Patrick if I can do that with you. 
and he granted me that opportunity. So I'm grateful to God, and those I thank him as essential for that wonderful opportunity. I pray that whatever prayer you have made on this day that I mark my anniversary, it will never go unanswered. Amen. And I have a testimony to give. I have sent a message across to my people in the country of Nigeria to pray for me as I mark my anniversary. And one person returned back with testimony of last year's own prayer of my own anniversary that she had two children, two daughters, and the last one is about 10 years, and since then I'll be asking God for another child. But after that prayer, God blessed her and the husband with a baby boy. And it's a thanksgiving to God for that gift. And I pray also that as you listen to this testimony, you have your own testimony to give through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down your heads and ask for God's blessing. Gracious Father, on this day that I celebrate my anniversary here in St. John the Evangelist Church, I ask you to bequeath your blessings upon your people, as many that are wondering what their future will be, may you bless their future. As many that are looking for the fruit of the womb, may you bless them with the fruit of the womb. As many that are looking for consolation and joy in their vocation, may you grant that unto them. Father, I ask you to bless your people with good health of mind and body. You know their heart desire. Since you have count me, though unworthy I am, to become your priest, May you, O oh God, through my hand this day, bless your people. May you bless their going out and their coming in. Bless the work of their hands. And whatever they lay their hands to do, may it all go well for them. This I ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you both now and forever. Amen. Go forth, the mass is ended.